This is the Robinson R-22, a two-seater, piston-powered helicopter that has been such an iconic staple in the aviation industry for training and personal flying since its inception in 1979 that it has earned its spot as the world's most popular light helicopter. Relatively cheap to buy and operate, its compact size and nimbleness might not be for everyone, but it offers an unparalleled experience for those who appreciate its particularities. The R-22 found a huge market because it did what no other did. It offered a relatively cheap means of getting into vertical flight with a machine that had just enough performance to open up commercial applications in both training and general utility work. Whether it's easier or harder to fly than other helicopters of its class is debatable, but owners and operators agree on one thing. It's cheap to fly and simple to maintain. And just like that, the R-22 became the most widespread helicopter trainer in the world, with over 5,000 models built to date. But after so many years since it was first produced, how does it compare to modern competitors? Stay with us till the end of the video because here is everything you need to know about the Robinson R-22. Stepping inside, it's evident that the helicopter is designed for a specific purpose. Minimalist, effective, utilitarian flying. The cabin width is approximately 44 inches or 112 centimeters, and the height is around 52 inches or 132 centimeters. Clearly, the R-22 is not designed for spacious luxury. Rather, it maximizes efficiency within its confined parameters. This becomes more apparent when you actually sit inside. The cabin can feel cramped for those who are accustomed to more generous dimensions, particularly if both the pilot and passenger are of a larger build. One of the standout features of the cabin is the visibility it offers. Its bubble-shaped canopy provides nearly 180-degree unobstructed views, a design that significantly aids situational awareness. The absence of a central pillar between the front windshields aids in providing a panoramic outlook. However, the downside to this is that the expansive canopy can magnify sunlight, making the cockpit hot during summer months and necessitating effective use of the available air vents. The R-22 boasts a straightforward control layout that minimizes distractions, vital for student pilots or anyone who appreciates an uncluttered cockpit. The helicopter employs a traditional T-bar cyclic control instead of the stick, which takes some time to get used to, but has its own ergonomic advantages. It allows both the pilot and co-pilot to have control access without the control stick obstructing the panel or taking up valuable cabin space. Instrumentation in the standard R-22 is minimal but adequate for VFR flying. The Robinson R-22 Beta II, a newer variant, does offer more advanced instrumentation options suitable for instrument training and more demanding operational conditions. The basic analog gauges display essential information like airspeed, altitude, and engine RPM. Still, those looking for a more modern cockpit might find the standard setup lacking in digital integration and automation features. The seats are relatively basic, without much cushioning or adjustability. They are designed to be lightweight and functional, with a focus on providing the most direct feel and control of the helicopter. Long flights could become uncomfortable, given the limited legroom and absence of lumbar support. The dual controls are a plus, but they further limit the already confined space, making it a tight fit for two people. On the flip side, the controls are easily accessible and the layout is intuitive, even for beginner pilots, making it an ideal trainer aircraft. Helicopters are not known for quiet interiors, and the R-22 is no exception. Engine noise penetrates the cabin quite noticeably, and even with noise-canceling headsets, you're in for a fairly loud ride. Vibration is also a factor, though less so than in some older or less refined models. The two-blade rotor system does contribute to higher vibration levels compared to helicopters with more blades, which can add to fatigue over longer flights. Safety is an area where the R-22 has seen continuous improvements. Energy-absorbing seats and a reinforced structure add to the helicopter's safety, though the aircraft lacks some advanced features like crash-resistant fuel systems in its standard configuration. Now let's talk more in detail about the avionics suite. The R-22 features a unique T-bar cyclic control system instead of the conventional stick cyclic, which allows both the pilot and the co-pilot to control the helicopter without a central stick taking up space or impeding access to the instrument panel. 
The Collective and Anti-Torque pedals are exactly where you'd expect to find them, and they offer a precise and responsive control feel. The avionics in a standard R22 are rudimentary but effective. An array of analog gauges provides essential flight data, including airspeed, altitude, vertical speed, and engine RPM. The tachometer is a dual needle unit that shows both engine and rotor RPM, crucial for avoiding overstressing the machine. A magnetic compass is usually affixed at the top of the windshield for easy reference. If you're interested in more advanced avionics, the Robinson R22 Beta 2 variant offers the ability to integrate more sophisticated systems. Garmin GPS units, such as the GNS 430 or the more recent GTN 650, can be added along with a transponder for ADS-B compliance. However, even with these upgrades, the avionics suite remains less integrated than what you'd find in some modern glass cockpit helicopters. The focus is clearly on VFR operations and flight training rather than on catering to the IFR environment. The instrument panel layout is simple and uncluttered, promoting ease of scan, a key aspect in flight training. The gauges are large enough for quick interpretation, usually 3.1 inches or 8 centimeters in diameter for primary instruments. In terms of illumination, the standard lighting is adequate but not exceptional. For those flying at night or in low light conditions, supplemental cockpit lighting might be desirable. Circuit breakers are located on the lower part of the instrument panel, easily accessible, but not so much so that they could be accidentally tripped. The electrical system is a 14 volt, nominal 12 volt, direct current system with an alternator and a battery for backup. The system is reliable but offers limited capacity for additional electronic equipment. Now let's talk about the engine, performance specifications, and how it flies. The Robinson R22 is powered by a Lycoming O320A2B or B2C or O360J2A piston engine, depending on the variant, with a TBO of 2,200 hours. This is a horizontally opposed four-cylinder carbureted engine. It is air-cooled with a fairly uncomplicated but robust design. Rated at 131 brake horsepower at 2652 RPM for five minute takeoff and 124 BHP for maximum continuous operation, this engine has proven to be quite durable. It's worth mentioning that the engine delivers approximately 103 shaft horsepower to the main rotor. The remaining horsepower is utilized for accessories and overcoming transmission losses. While this may not sound like a lot of power, considering the R22's lightweight design, it's more than enough to provide respectable performance. The engines allow a maximum rate of climb per minute of 1,200 feet or 365 meters and a maximum cruising altitude of 14,000 feet or 4,300 meters. The aircraft has a maximum speed of 102 knots and a maximum cruise speed of 96 knots with an average hourly fuel burn of 8 to 10 gallons or 30 to 38 liters. The helicopter has a maximum range of 210 nautical miles, which is 240 miles or 387 kilometers, with a useful load of 730 pounds or 330 kilograms. When the R-22 was first introduced to the market in 1979, the price for a new unit was approximately $40,000 before options, but now the price for a pre-owned model ranges between $100,000 and $400,000, and the charter price is estimated at $500 to $1,000 per hour. Naturally, prices will vary depending on availability, fuel prices, ground fees, and more. While the annual fixed cost is roughly $15,000 to $30,000, the average hourly operating cost is estimated at $150 to $300. Thank you for staying with us till the end. Here are two videos you can watch next. If you enjoyed this video, make sure to leave a like and subscribe. Thanks for watching.